from Forbes.com, Pentagon documents reveal the U.S. as planned for a Bitcoin rebellion. By Billy Bambro, contributor, Bitcoin has struggled to find support in the U.S. government with President Donald Trump, along with Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin, leading the criticism. Now, it's been revealed the U.S. Department of Defense has war-gamed scenarios involving a Generation Z rebellion that uses Bitcoin to undermine and evade the establishment. Now, they're going to tell you in this war game, they won. But that's not how it's going to happen in reality. You want a war? I say we give it to them. Millennials can be part of this too, right? It doesn't have to just be a Generation Z rebellion. We are already using Bitcoin to undermine and evade the establishment. In the Pentagon war game, young people born between the mid-90s and early 2010s used cyber attacks to steal money and convert it to Bitcoin. God, <laughs> old people are clutching their pearls. Young people, I hope you're taking notes. Called the 2018 Joint Land, Air, and Sea Strategic Special Program, JLAS, the war game is set in 2025. We don't have to wait until then and is intended to reflect a plausible depiction of major trends and influences in the world regions. The scenario, which echoes recent protests in the U.S. and around the world against racial injustice, involves some members of Gen Z who see, them see, see themselves as agents for social change and believe the system is rigged against them, begin a global cyber campaign to expose injustice and corruption and to support causes it deems beneficial. Hmm. Would you like to be an agent for social change? Do you believe the system is rigged? Well, then join the global cyber campaign to expose injustice and corruption and to support whatever causes you deem beneficial. <laughs> I feel like they, they wrote the recruiting video for this thing for us in the script they came up with. The group called Zebellion. You know, I'm. Did they really have to make it a generational thing? <clears throat> you know, I kind of feel like if it comes to really taking stock of the, the significance in the generational divides, it's the internet generation. I thought it was the millennials, but we were Y, not Z. So we need to come with a nice end. Of, we don't have this cool zinger to start our name with, right? So no, you got generation z but what really matters and i think in this case it's not just generations y and z and i'm not just trying to include myself here and, and i know at age 38 i'm on i'm on the older edge of the millennial generation right and you always identify with the youngers if you can but it's not just the millennials and the zers it's even people older than that who have adapted to the new technological reality that we find ourselves in, in this human experience. We are all the z now. And we don't have to wait for Generation Z to get old enough to step up and lead it. And more importantly, we don't really need leaders. We take the lesson from Bitcoin and decentralize all the things, including leadership, and most importantly, lead yourself. Now, some people say, but Adam, you're a leader. You're... No, maybe a thought leader. But even then, I'm not a leader. I'm providing an information service to you to help you better lead yourself. I am a leader by example in my own life, in the way that I live, in the way that I have chosen to live, in an off-grid homesteading lifestyle Asserting my sovereignty as best that I can. The z is not something that needs leaders. And that's why I think in this sense, we're all Generation Z. We are all the z -bellion. We are all those, well, in my case, I think I grew up with the internet. 
but who understand its potential and the ability for us to become the generation that wielded the internet and brought down the systemic injustices of governments all over the world once and for all. The scenario which echoes recent protests in the US and around the world against racial injustice involves some members of Gen Z who see them see, see themselves, oh, sorry, read that. Can I, I don't mind reading that again. Agents for social change who believe the system is rigged against them and begin a global cyber campaign to expose injustice and corruption. The group called Zebellion encourages cyber attacks against organizations that support the establishment, funneling stolen cash into Bitcoin to make small, below-the-threshold donations to worthy recipients and Zebellion members. You know, at some point, we might get this, a big enough financial break in the dam. You know, it's funny that they call this stolen cash, right? Because they, uh, they're they allegedly saying that these people would commit fraud to, to steal it and convert it to Bitcoin and crypto. The money itself is stolen from the American people in the first place. The, the entire dollar system is illegitimate. So bringing it down, they recognize this. The Pentagon is, they're telling you the playbook. Pay attention, Z-Bellers. Z-Bellion members? No, there's no membership in the Z-Bellion. It is not something that is. It is not a club with a secret handshake. It is something that you do. The program, which also reportedly war game scenarios involving Islamist militants and anti-capitalist extremists, was conducted by students and faculty from the U.S. military's war colleges, the training ground for prospective generals and admirals. I got to read this. This is so much fun. Z Bellion. In the mid-2020s, the age demographic known as Generation Z or Gen Z began hitting their 30s. Like the millennials who preceded them, Gen Z were characterized as even more comfortable, if not dependent upon, technology in nearly every aspect of their lives. Social scientists frequently characterize Gen Z as having grown up with cell phone and internet usage from a very young age and interacting on social media websites for a significant portion of their socializing. Image and video intensive media are more popular among this group than textual narratives and many Gen Z self-identify by the social media communities to which they belong. Both the September 11 terrorist attacks and the Great Recession greatly influenced the attitudes of this generation in the U.S. and resulted in a feeling of unsettlement and insecurity among Gen Z. Although millennials experienced these events during their coming of age, Gen Z lived through them as part of their childhood, affecting their realism and worldview. Although many Gen Z sought to avoid the financial stresses experienced by their parents, many found themselves stuck with excessive college debt when they discovered employment options did not meet their expectations. Gen Z are often described as seeking independence and opportunity, but are also among the least likely to believe there is such a thing as the American dream and that the system is rigged against them. Frequently seeing themselves as agents for social change, they crave fulfillment and excitement in their job to help move the world forward. Despite the technology proficiency they possess, Gen Z actually prefer person-to-person -person contact as opposed to online interaction. They describe themselves as being involved in their virtual and physical communities and as having rejected excessive consumerism. Now, it's worth noting that at the bottom of this document, it says, no notional exercise material for educational purposes only, jlast.spay2018 world summary. world summary. I say we use this material for educational purposes to the fullest extent possible. Bitcoin has increasingly been adopted by Wall Street and the world's biggest financial institution since its 2017 price explosion, but it remains a tool to fight government control. The Pentagon war game documents have been revealed after Florida Republican Representative Matt Gates called for the government to freeze the money of demonstrators after countrywide protests over the killing of George Floyd turned violent this month. 
As Nathaniel Whitmore, Bitcoin cryptocurrency expert, said, one of the most important tools in the authoritarian toolkit is the ability to freeze the funding of legitimate political consent. By separating the infrastructure of money from the infrastructure of state power, Bitcoin makes it that much harder for this type of politically motivated confiscation. confiscation. Bitcoin has seen a surge of interest in recent months due to the coronavirus pandemic and never before seen levels of government borrowing. It's a good time to buy. In the wake of unprecedented central bank action around the COVID-19 crisis, it seemed like the most relevant narrative of Bitcoin in 2020 was as a hedge against inflation. It appears, however, that its capacity for censorship resistance might be just as relevant. And while they are desperate to keep everybody poor, a lot of us have cashed out of our crypto holdings to uh, maybe not cash out being the appropriate term since you cash out of U.S. cash to get into Bitcoin, right? But have uh, let go of savings in order to survive in challenging times. But there may be a switch on the horizon in terms of what is the most effective, practical currency. Bitcoin may be about to make that switch. So, my fellow Z-Bellers of the Z-Bellion, Bitcoin has come to help us overthrow the great injustices in the power structures of the world today. All that's missing is you. So join the Zebellion today. That concludes this educational public service announcement.